guys, Cody Brownwell here. Currently in Verbier, Switzerland. It's just the start of the season, pre-season. We had a massive snowfall just recently and it looks like there's a lot more snow coming. And we're thinking there's no better time to do some episodes about Avalon safety and just being safe in free riding in general. Sweet. Yeah, you're good. And we're gonna start off with just the basics and then eventually make our way into the more technical parts. Episode one. And this one we're gonna dive into how to prepare your trip into the backcountry and what equipment is really important to have. So let's go back to this morning and check that all out. The first step to do before you go on a trip or when you get to a new place, a new resort, you wanna read up on avalanche bulletins. You can find this really easy if you just Google like local avalanche bulletins in, in Verbier or whatsoever and then every day the update. They're always super short and super concrete and get the info like really easy. So get it up in the morning with your cup of coffee. It just takes a few minutes to read. When you read the bulletin, you obviously got to know how to use it. You got to read up what everything means with all these different types of snow and where it's been blown in and what sides. So you want to be able to orientate yourself in the mountains as well. What is the north side? What is the south? facing side, so that's going to be all in the bulletin, but you have to be able to orientate yourself when you're out in the mountains. When you're checking weather forecasts, there's so many different websites. It's good to check a few, and then you can blend all together and get a bit of a hum. Now we checked the forecast and everything, so let's go through the stuff we need to bring up to the mountain. I've got my avalanche airbag here. Pull that thing, that thing could potentially save your life. The fold-out shovel, which is also an essential. We got our, our probe. Right there. This one slides in usually pretty perfect as well. And then we have our beacon. So this one, before you head out, you always want to check the battery on this bad boy. It's always good to have a record as well. So if my jacket has one in there, even my pants have some. And if your gear or your jackets don't have it, you can always go buy one. They're super cheap. You can just stick it to your helmet. The better you know your gear, the faster you're going to be out there. It's good to get acquaintance with all your stuff and at least a couple of times a year. Get it out there, get your friends together and do a couple of, like fake exercises. Yeah, I think it's time for you to leave and time for coffee and it's early in the morning and we're going to head out soon. So we've gone through all our stuff. So see you at breakfast, please. Getting into free riding is always uh, something really complicated and to get better in free riding and like with being able to be a bit more safe in the mountains, I see two different fields. So one is knowledge, train, learn about uh, snow safety. And then there is, you know, like the kind of practice, the kind of reality, like the fact of being up there, the experience and all of that where you need to kind of use a bit of that knowledge that you have, which is the base, but where you need to make it match with your personality, with your style of riding, with the people that are around you, with all the surroundings. Basically, you just need to put time in there and always have a huge, huge margin of safety. People don't realize how much snow stability, it's so hard to control. To me, this is the one least controllable in the mountains and, and which makes free riding so tricky. The more I know, the more I realize that I don't know and the more I realize that I can get tricked and uh, the more I realize how can I have done that for so long without having had more accidents.